You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Hey, this is the Doug Stanhope Podcast with Margot Wallenberg, one of our old favorite uh, Bisbee elite famous and, of course, uh, Chaley forgot to hit the record button, so we're going to join it already in progress. Sorry, Chaley. Fucking. <laughs> you know, you could have said we we enjoyed Margot so much that we started the podcast without even trying to start the podcast. It just she came no, in. We, we had tried cocktails. to start the podcast, and you, you, well, you, you missed a little bit of me rambling to start the. And I, now I'm doing it again. So I'm I'm filling in what you missed was me just rambling to Margot when I should have just let her talk. Spoiler alert, at some point I leave the podcast and you don't hear me for about five minutes. Why? Find out on this episode of the Doug Stanhope Podcast with Margot Wallenberg. Within the community. The community. Oh my God. And boy, then the. I can say it because my nose fits in a jock strap, but not (laughs) you. (laughs) Isn't that something? And then they got into a huge fist fight. And the, the the little mulatto got her shirt ripped off her, and it turned out she had a third boob under her armpit. What? Yeah, it was just, I'm just going, I can't even. Oh, you're going to switch schools after that. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going, I can't even believe this. You is might going. overcome racism, but that third boob under your arm, that's going to haunt you. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, the poor thing. Isn't she that, a, isn't that needed a, a job staff for her nose, and she had a third <laughs> tip. <laughs> Turns out she was Barry in the lead. Oh, God, Isn't bad. that a superfluous nipple? Is that what they call Jesus, it? Jesus, I felt I felt sorry for. <laughs> right, Margo we- is uh, Margo's uh, famous in in Bisbee. We were just talking about last time you were here. We were filming. Uh, we had just come back from that cruise we were talking about, but uh, we we're filming a pilot here. And we had you on, and it was it was February, but it was uh, it was still a, it was a sunny day. It's warm, seasonably warm, and it's it takes forever to set up cameras. And Margot's sitting out with us in the sun, waiting to set up in here in the funhouse to film, having some cocktails, and then uh, I feel dizzy. I I think I I better lay down. Yeah, and you. He laid down and then rallied for the shoot. Right, right, right. We talked some shit on the on the on the show. Yep. And then the next day, you went out. I think it was Buzz's uh, local musician that had passed. That uh, he went to his uh, his memorial service. Or I, mean, I think it was a fundraiser. I don't think he'd. I got. I can't remember. Oh, that, no. oh, that was at the uh, at, 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 at Elmo's. Elmo's, yeah. At Elmo's, right, yeah. right, right. And uh, you had the same incident happen the next night, right. And then uh, you called me on the Monday or whatever it was. Yeah, it turned out I had too many strokes two nights in a row. Yeah, <laughs> she Jesus. Just, she just parties <laughs> on. Yeah, well, Jeez. what are you going to do, you know? But actually, it was um, an overabundance of, of blood thinner that uh, would lower my blood pressure to the point where I would just pass out. Well, you said that was in in connection with... Yes. What you had been drinking and, and consuming. Yeah. Yes, yes, the accommodation is not all that good. So Was that at the double P? What? Oh, we, I, yeah, we, I, we passed, walked out, in, I yeah. passed out the double P, too. Yeah, we walked was, into the double P, and it was, oh, Teal Settis was doing a Bloody Mary thing, and they right, had a whole spread. Yeah, Teal Settis and all that, and I was and, sitting in the back of the bar. Well, well not when I was there. <laughs> you were no, slumped no, they, over then the they, bar. Then they, then they, and I said, no, no, let me stay, and they were tossing me into the ambulance and hauling my sorry ass off. Yeah. yeah. Teal Settis was uh, the afterthought of that night. <laughs> <laughs> I told everybody it was Teo Shetty's. <laughs> it's the mixer, not the booze. It's yeah, the mixer. Don't buy that shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is good stuff. Well, you, you said you, you're you're turning eighty in April, right? On Earth Day. On Earth Day or April twenty second, they named it after me. <laughs> yeah, I was here before they created Earth Day. <laughs> and you're you're on the patch. Uh, you're, yeah. I mean, you're. You're yeah. cheating a bit, but well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah well, you're rules here. Rules are made to be broken. 
How, how long have you been not smoking? Or is um, it just uh, tapering off? Oh, God. I haven't had a cigarette until today for probably two weeks. All right. You know, but I knew coming over here, it's just, you know. Gotta have a cigarette. You're gonna it's you're gonna be inhaling it anyway, so yeah, you might as right. well have might one in your well, fingers. Might as well just dip my feet in it, man. <laughs> you know? Well you you get half a lung removed. Uh yeah, I had uh it's interesting. On on the right side your lung has three sacks or whatever you call them. Just Lugs. like that mulatto girl. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then on the left you only have two. So when, uh, fortunately, they caught mine, I'd had a a scar on my lung since I was a kid. I'd had a combination of uh, bronchial pneumonia and whooping cough at the same time. And it left a little scar in my lung, just a little tad. But they've been keeping an eye on it forever. So when they noticed that growing, they just, you know, grabbed me and came me on in. So what they did is they went in and removed two of the sacks or whatever you call them and then left just the one and so i was fortunate i didn't have to go through any chemo or anything like that and uh so it's it fascinating because then the one sack or whatever you call lobes them, yeah, well, yeah well there's you got two lungs but one of the bags or whatever in this three bagger right hand side <laughs> spread out and filled it up oh there thank you very much <laughs> Yeah, well, let's see. See, okay, you see there's three on on what would be our left, but it would be the Looking right. Looking at it, yeah, on the left. Three, yeah, and then on the right, there's just two. Yep. Which is really the left. But anyhow, so what happened is <laughs> they removed all those, and then the one that's left fills fills the whole thing. I thought it was pretty interesting. So it actually grows to like expand expands, in the cavity in the it cavity expands, that's there. Yeah, the one wow. the one sack or whatever was left expanded and then filled up that whole cavity. Isn't that fascinating? That is amazing. It just blew my mind. And did it just do that over time, or did they have to display something until it kind of filled in the air? I, or is it I like, don't know. Is it I, like those uh, those uh, those those uh, emergency <laughs> on the airplane where you just pull the like, oh, life, yeah, strap, life jacket? Yeah. I think that's kind can of. You, if it deflates, can you blow into a little <laughs> tube <laughs> off to the side? Could be. <laughs> Hell, I don't know. But that's yeah. Is that? I thought that was pretty fascinating. Wow. When Margot showed up today, she goes, yeah, if anything happens like that again, don't call the paramedics. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> Just lay me down for a while and let me... My mom was like that when it got to the point she had uh, she had a knee replacement. It was just... It was worse after, you know, you know these things. It just... You're just Your body's running down. Yeah, And then she, she fell in a supermarket... <laughs> And she didn't. She didn't sue or anything. She goes, "I'm old. That that happened, you know." Yeah, I mean, why everybody's so goddamn sue yeah. crazy now? It's ridiculous. But she said that I'm not getting anything. If that if that hip is broken, it's, I'm not going under the knife again. Yeah, she goes, I, "I'm done." And within two weeks, you know, she I passed can away. Understand that? Yeah. And she didn't break her hip, but she did fracture. Oh man, fracture the uh, something up in there that was close enough that it was like she was bedridden oh, after baby. that. Yeah, I don't blame but No, she went out the way she wanted to. Yeah, not exactly. in the hospital. Not yeah, in the hospital. I was a hospice volunteer for quite a few years. Yeah. I uh, attended bar by night, and I was a fabulous hospice volunteer during the day. And uh, the great thing is with hospice is you want to allow people to die in the comfort of their home. That's best. You know, which is very Best cool. case. You know, yeah. And so I really worked a lot on behalf of, of people to let that happen mm -hmm. and uh you're just more comfortable in your own surroundings for christ's sake even if they're weird <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> yeah you know it's, it's your home i used to turn up with uh i had a an old van and i'd have the bed made out in the van and uh i'd have you know flowers around there and stuff and i'd take the the hospice patient and plug them into the van and bring them up in the van and bring them around and let them visit their friends or their friends could climb in the van and be Take them to the them. bar. Yeah. And, you know, in those days, they expected hospice volunteers to be little gray-haired ladies, right? And here's this old six-foot-one redhead turning up, and I had a big old uh, leather golf bag, 
and I had in it. For I your had dick? A, huh? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was a dickhead. No, but uh, <laughs> I had a a bunch of uh, canes in it. So, walking canes. Yeah, walking canes and stuff. So I'd turn up and go, okay. Like a caddy for the dying? <laughs> yeah, right. It was just cool, you know. And I turn up, they're expecting some little old gray haired lady. And here's this, here I turn up with this big Get leather. The man. You know, and here, these are canes, and you're going to be changing height and stuff. And I'd say, do you know why I'm here? And they go, well, you're a hospice. And I said, you know why you're in a hospice? They tell you to, to be permitted into hospice or whatever qualify you, you have six months or less to live is how they determine that. So we go volunteer. And I said, man, this is a time now. Well, you can get a late checkout. <laughs> yeah, there were there were a lot of people that did late checkouts. But, you know, I tell them this is a time to set the book straight with everybody. The people that you love, tell them you love them. And the people that you hate, tell them to go fuck off, <laughs> you know. And they're just looking at me like, holy shit, you know. And it was really interesting because a lot of the families, they didn't want to face up to it. So that's why I made a point of saying, you realize, well, you're here. And I tell them, you're in God's waiting room. Because I'm an atheist, but, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Mean. And it really, uh, it was interesting. The One of the worst I ever saw, man. This guy was an insurance salesman. He didn't even have insurance on his wife or any health insurance. He was having an affair. He was just a creep, man, that guy. Really. Well, I gave him a piece of my mind, but right? she didn't want to hear. I, I, I would want Margot hospice care. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I had, I had one of these guys. He was really neat. Um they named a lot of places after him, and he was, I took him in, it was around Christmas, and you know what's interesting, too, is a lot of those people in hospice kind of choose when they're going to die. They'll wait, like, until uh, a family member visits them, or after a holiday, or something that they want to see, and then they'll just kind of fly away. Yeah, my dad did that. I was the, my the dad last did. one there. Mine, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did, what did your dad do? Uh, he had uh, he had uh, uh, colon cancer. Yeah. Uh, but he's yeah he was pretty much you know drugged out of it and right last you know, day. But I I I had filmed a Comedy Central special and I had to take the first bus from New York City to Rhode Island in the morning. And when I got there, he opened his eyes the last time. And he wanted to see you. me. And then it, that was it. Yeah. And how about your how about your dad? Uh, it was uh, the day before my birthday. I took uh, my brother and I. I'm a twin, so we we took You're our a twin. Yeah, so oh, we took right. our gals and we went to visit him. And he was in he was and in like, kind of an you? assisted living. This is in California, Southern California. Where in California? Uh, Fullerton. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, we went there, and that's the first time uh, he met my girlfriend Jody that I met out in the desert with Doug. We did these parties out there. As we, we turned, hey, Dad, nice to see you. My mom's sitting there. Uh, turned around, left, and we were going out to L.A. to a party that they were having for us because our birthday was the next day. And my mom called. And I go, I'll take the call. You guys go get the balloons and the <laughs> and the the, the, the the streamers or whatever. They're going into this thing. We're like four miles from where it was. And she said, uh, yeah, he just passed. See, he's like, waiting. he was just, that was it, you know. And I go, waiting for you. <laughs> I go right to Jody, my girlfriend. I go, you killed my pop. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he doesn't approve. <laughs> it really is interesting, though, how they do that. Yeah, I don't know how he figured that out. I don't know how they... Your dad was in... Your, uh, I've seen the home. picture. Yeah, that's yeah. a very sweet picture where you kissing his forehead. Well, that was nice. He was at home. Man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I had this one guy. Uh, they named some places after me. It's quite a character. And... Um, we were, it was Christmas time, and uh, they had this big, this place we were shopping, and they had a great big box with different beautiful canes in it. And he looks at me, and you know, he's walking around, and he goes, you know, I could just take this cane and flip it in here and take another one out. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you could, you know. So... Anyhow, we're done. All of a sudden, he goes, okay, I'm ready to check out. I'm ready to check out. I got my stuff. I'm Let's rock and roll. And I said, okay. So as we're walking out of the place, we're going over towards my van. 
I notice he's taking this cane and he's flipping it, but he's not hitting it on the ground. And I went, what did you do? And he had this beautiful cane. He said, I just threw in my old one and took out the best one I could find. <laughs> and I said, God damn it. I said, you got me driving the getaway car for, a, you know, a hospice. And he was just laughing. He just loved it. He was so pleased with himself. And he had waited. And sure enough, the day after Christmas, he flew away. But he had the fun and joy of of stealing that. And, I, you know, I'm driving the getaway car, getaway van for a hospice patient. <laughs> It was just really weird. Well, as you can uh, tell by the uh, the doorbells, as we call the dogs, we have uh, we have a uh, new company. So let's take a break, and then we'll be right back with uh, Margot and uh, Margot's vocal doppelganger. Please hold <laughs> cocktails. Tom Waits. <laughs> Tom Waits is my doppelganger. <laughs> Priceless pillow. Priceless pillow. I've been talking about it for weeks, and it made my nest complete. <laughs> I, I added new blankets to it, too, just to go with the priceless pillow. If you want to sleep like a corpse and while away your golden years, there's no better place for your head than on a priceless pillow. It's a premium quality luxury pillow at an affordable price. No more tossing and turning, folding your pillow up, and sweating through the night. Priceless pillow can solve all of those problems including the booze sweats. <laughs> See for yourself. Log on to PricelessPillow.com and put in the promo code STANHOPE for 30% off your purchase of a Priceless Pillow. Priceless Pillow is the ideal pillow for all types of sleepers. Backside, stomach sleepers are all in love with it. You deserve a good night's sleep, and Priceless Pillow can give you just that. It has for me. Log on to PricelessPillow.com and put in the promo code STANHOPE for 30% off. Whether you're looking for King Queen, standard Priceless Pillow will work for you. Oh, and they have a five-year warranty, and it's machine washable, which is good for if you're a drooler like me. It also has 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you're not satisfied, they'll take care of it. Perfect. Log on to PricelessPillow.com and put in the promo code STANHOPE for 30% off. PricelessPillow.com. Grant, you know, the hat maker, and his his wife, Lynette, or I don't know if they don't, married, don't know. it was like his wife, Lynette. She was a... Uh, our Lady of Rubber, she made rubber stamps. She was a really trippy guy. Our lady, did you say Our Lady she, of Rubber? She called herself Our Lady of Rubber. Really neat people. And that they, you know how they met? Tap dancing, for Christ's sake. We're back on, by the way. So, oh. yes. <laughs> That's all right. And but anyhow, it was just so sweet. But he never let anybody know that she'd been in the hospital and that she was ill. And I mean, the horror show. I wish he'd have shared it with us because... He said he went in that hospital and she was just covered with bed sores and things like that. And they just were not taking care of her in the hospital. But I just feel so bad that Grant didn't share that with with me or us or whatever. And that's a, the problem with a lot of us. We just don't like to ask for help, you know? Yeah. I remember one time when I bought my first place here in in um, Bisbee, or one of them, and uh, it was up a bunch of steps, and it was, uh, I had a wood stove, which I couldn't haul any wood because my back was out, and I'm literally crawling on my hands and knees into the toilet and chopping ice off the top of the toilet bowl, and I'm too stupid to call my friends which I did have back yeah. in the day, and, and say, hey, I need some help. Why? What makes us so stubborn or stupid not to admit that we need help? Or I, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. I, I never ask for help. I never ask Chaley for, to fix my cable or Bingo to make me a drink. Or, <laughs> oh, you're so full Chad, of beans. Chad to kill a guy. <laughs> I'm that way. I'm that way, but I know why. It's because I'm afraid that somebody else will ask me for help at some point. So I'm trying to make it. <laughs> Let me Chad, see your Chad, hands. You don't do very much hard work, man. Look at those. None. Those look like a car dealer's I hands. Do. I do. Huh? I do less What's hard work that? than a car dealer. <laughs> I said a car dealer. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I do less work than both of them put together. <laughs> look at those hands. Jeez. I used to be a mechanic. They used to be rough, but uh, 
Yeah. Now, uh, what, now what, I'm just lazy. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Just no, nothing. Lazy? Literally. Yeah. 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 I just you just wait on uh, Doug over here, huh? Yeah. You are you Dougie's gopher? Uh, <laughs> I, no. That's... No, I don't think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Doug, have you never met Margo before? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back was... when he was dealing cards. <laughs> To car dealers. Yeah, she was she was saying how uh, she uh she got the last time we played the Royale, she got recognized by her voice. Chad gets recognized a lot just from his voice being on the podcast. Yeah. But I get recognized as you. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's the problem. Oh, oh, I thought you were Margo. <laughs> well, I've got a pollen plantation in my throat. Yeah, you know you didn't always have that voice. No, no, but I've had I had it operated on once. And I thought that's it, man. I'm not going through that BS again. Yeah, for what? That's kind of yeah, your signature. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, Why would you get rid of that? It's well, like, perfect. Well, it, I was I trying think... to sound feminine, but I've had so many people call up and say, "Oh, I, I." Somebody told me to call Margo here, and I'm going, "Well, I sound like a man, but I'm a woman." So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first time I called you, Mikey Palmer. I bought my house from you. You were selling real right. estate, but he warned me ahead of time. But then when I was having, you know, like bank people were like having to call you and. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I accidentally called her sir. I go, don't worry. She gets it all the time. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so used to it. I just go, it's okay. I sound like a man. It's all right. You know, he was such, he is such a statesman. Who's that? Oh, Mike um, Palmer. Yeah. He just called me. He's, uh, you know, he's getting some, uh, uh, what do you call it? Experimental uh, treatment for his Parkinson's. He is. Yeah, uh, he's Wonderful. like one of like thirty-five people that they get selected to do this for Parkinson's, and they've done these studies in the past, and they're really oh, successful. And he is such a lovely man. I yeah. just adore him. Do you get tired of having these conversations at your age? Where all your friends are like, oh, what'd you get replaced? Oh, they're putting a chip in my head to help oh, my Parkinson's. Shit, I'm telling you, it's just amazing. We're all spare parts these days. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, I get to go out. And it's like, okay, where are my teeth? Okay, where are my hearing aids? Where are my glasses? You know, I got pain pills in case my back goes out. I mean, <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> but I'm here to piss and moan about it, so... You, you're a, a you're thing. a ghost of Christmas future. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am the future. <laughs> you give us all hope. Yeah, there you go. That kid behind you this morning was uh, 25 years old. He was f- fetal position in the shower, throwing up all over the place, thinking he's going to die. Oh, Nico. Yeah. Oh. Now, now he's seeing you, thinking, no, maybe I'll live another day. <laughs> there you go. Well, my guy. I tell people, I you know, I owe my longevity to a sense of humor. And as I told you earlier, marijuana and tequila. I have all of those. See, <laughs> there you go. You're hey, set for life. You're set, baby. <laughs> and everybody says we we just you don't just what was it they're saying? We talk about it longevity now. You don't say old age. Oh. I'm enjoying my longevity. Well, I've been enjoying being longevity for decades since I was 5, 10, and 12. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that depends on your sense of humor, too, because my grandpa, my grandparents are in their mid-80s, and every time I go visit them, my grandpa is, come here and let me show you how to start my boat so when I croak, you know how to start the boat. <laughs> oh, He's always wonderful. telling me how to, All my <laughs> friends are dead, Jay. He's always just telling me it's dead no good jokes. for him. You know, I mean... <laughs> I swear to God, your sense of humor will keep yeah. you kicking for, yeah. you know, <laughs> piss your friends off, too. It makes you feel good. <laughs> yeah, you. We were talking about this before we started about going to Safeway, where oh, people, God. everyone in town knows you. Yeah. And, you know, the voice. <laughs> the voice and the height. Yeah. You know, and it's like the dreaded, if I, there's no way I can whip in and out of Safeway, and I call it the dreaded Safeway. But, um, so one time I thought, man, I just don't want to deal with anybody. And I put on the weirdest outfit. <laughs> it was so bizarre. I was embarrassed to wear it, but I got in and out of Safeway, 
because nobody wanted to admit they even knew me. It was just, they looked at me and they'd avert their eyes. And, oh, God, I hope she doesn't talk to me. You know? <laughs> it, was, it worked. Marco went off the deep end. I don't want to yeah, deal with yeah, that shit right, today. Yeah. Too scary for everybody, man. That was so funny. <laughs> But it's uh, when you can't remember, more people know you than you can remember. Yeah, it is. And, and, and you know, I'm getting old. I'm, you know, my memory ain't what it used to be. And, uh, I mean, I've sold, I remember when I would sell someone a, a property, I could remember the name of all their kids. I remembered who their lender was. I knew, you know, what schools are, all that. Now they come up, hey, and I've sold their kids' property. And they come up and go, hey, and I'm going, I know your face, but I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I admit it. I'm sorry. I can't remember your name. I'm, I'm old, you know, and they, they accept that. Yeah. And you know, another thing was back in the day when uh, kids would be walking down the street, you know, you know, how young boys always got to act like they're really tough motherfuckers. And yeah, I'm, you know, and they're walking along and they're saying, you know, the F word and all this stuff, and they're spitting in the street and being real, real cool, you know. And I walk up and say, Hey, how you kids doing? You be sure and tell your parents. Margo said hello. And boy, they would straighten right up and just, you know, I had no idea who they were, who their parents were. But boy, they were just like straight up. Fly right. Yeah, it absolutely was so funny. And it worked every time. They just knew I knew their parents, and I was going to tell them what little turd balls they were. <laughs> mm, this is good. Sure, glass. Help yourself. Tell us when you need more ice. Oh no, this is just perfect. I uh, yeah, we'll go to Safeway, and people will. Well, we went to. I guess we were playing New York last, where. We ran into like three different couples that had visited us here that just randomly, hence the security cameras, <laughs> and two of which had stayed overnight in the guest house. <laughs> yeah, I, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. I've I've had that happen. <laughs> Remember that time we stayed up at your guest room up over the garage, and I'm going, "Oh, sure," you know, and I have no effing clue <laughs> the, the, the just were. admitting that you're old part that seems like a good uh, you know to diffuse well, I'm it old, I'm old Stan Hope uses I'm drunk in yeah, the same sorry. way well I, <laughs> I tell my old fartess I'm a fartess it's feminine right that's you know what, what is really funny is I feel I really am feminine but I just don't look or sound like it <laughs> I have, feel the same way about being masculine. <laughs> you don't look or sound like no. it either. <laughs> Not in the least. I feel like I fake it good until somebody calls out my soft hands. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they are, honey. I'm telling you what, man. I don't know. You did that. Those hands are softer than somebody be milking a cow. Oh, I wouldn't milk a cow. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is feminine. <laughs> I'm a fan of naps. Wait, were you were you were married or uh, in a long term relationship or? Okay, my first husband was uh, Stanislaw Miklos Karpinski, and he oh, was a, a, he was 18 years older than me. Easy to Google. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> And he was um, a Billy Mitchell bomber pilot in World War II. He was 18 years older than me. Then my second husband was uh, MIT in Maine Maritime. And he was six years younger than me. So I'm a very generous-natured woman when it comes to the age <laughs> of my <mother. laughs> But I do like him with some brains. You know. What's the last one? What, the one with brains? <laughs> <laughs> what, was your, what was your last squeeze? Oh, God. It's been so long, I forgot. I meant like a regular one. Regular squeeze? Not just some Elmo's After Dark guy. That you oh, think. not. not. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Backdoor Man. <laughs> I love Backdoor Man. I'll tell you why. 
Please do. You don't have to worry about the table manners. <laughs> I mean, when I when I meet a gentleman and I'm interested in the first thing I would I learned decades ago, never go out to dinner with them. Go to lunch with them first and find out if they have any fucking table manners. <laughs> really? <laughs> You know, I mean, if the guy can't even sit, takes a fork and scratches his ear with it, <laughs> you understand what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be, I don't want to be hanging out with that dude. What, what's what's your definition of a backdoor man? Um, it's a lover that comes in the back door and that we s- scratch each other's itches, but uh, I certainly don't want to be seen in public with him. <laughs> All right. Well, you know how the kids could, uh, you know, miscalculate what you mean by a backdoor man in today's day and age of porn hub and you porn and porn porn and mourn porn. That's a backdoor backdoor man. Okay. You you, got to say it twice for it to be. All right. (laughs) We're talking about anal. (laughs) Oh, don't let the door hit you in the ass. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. (laughs) <laughs> There's a lighter around here somewhere. It's right in it's here. Right I, there. Always, oh, good. I always keep the lighter in the doodah. <laughs> good work. <laughs> For a non-smoker, you're a good smoker. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, like I say, I started smoking when I was 12 and 5 foot 10, and they said the smoking would stunt your growth. <laughs> So, Could have been Andre the Giant, and look at you. <laughs> yeah, right. But I don't have. I didn't have the giant toads. But I would go in. I my mother had. She smoked Lucky Strikes. The in the red. There were red pack. Yeah, red pack. So I go in and I steal her Lucky Strikes, and I was raised in a citrus orchard. So we go in and go in underneath the citrus tree, and I. Smoke cigarettes and figured it stunt my growth. So thank God I smoked all those cigarettes. I could have been instead of six one, I could have been seven one for all you know. <laughs> I mean, really. Was that in California? Yeah, yeah, Southern California, uh, Fontana, California, yeah, yeah. Kaiser Steel Town. Mm-hmm. And I used to run around with the Purdue Angels. That's a motorcycle gang. Mm-hmm. How does what is the Purdue Angels compared to the Hell's Angels? Well, they were the same, but San Bernardino, the Hell's Angels, but they were they were really just a bunch of guys that worked at. Uh, oh, that was know, the chapter Purdue San, Ber- San Bernardino. They call it Purdue. Uh yeah, I yeah. guess that's what we call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that they were they were mostly just factory workers and, and ex military, and they were a bunch of really nice guys, you know. One thing when I, um, I was in a, a motorcycle accident with my first love, Dexter Shields was his name, April 11th, 1957. And, um, I was in college. I got out of high school early because they didn't want to see me hanging around. (laughs) And, uh, we were following somebody home and, The guy signaled for a left, and Dexter went to pass him on the right, and the guy swung. He had the lights on going for a left, mm-hmm. but then he swung in front of us. From the second lane over? And uh, the last thing Dexter said to me was, let go. And that's when you wrote a pinion pad, and there wasn't a, a bar on the back. What's a pinion pad? A pinion pad. Oh, like uh, a buddy pegs. Pad. Buddy pegs. Just, the back, just a back oh. seat. Just right. like, a, like a black Kotex pad kind of yeah. deal. You well, know, I mean, much larger than there that. There you go. Now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. I Put it in terms of uh, feminine project products, and then I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, a picture a, a black feminine pad, but without a backrest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Boy, the days of feminine pads with backrests. Oh, Remember those? Comfort. So anyhow, I flew <laughs> off, and I ended up uh, rolling underneath the front and back wheels of the car and Damn. got got up and went back there, and he was lying there, not looking too good. Dexter was. Dexter was not yeah. looking too good. And... Uh, 
I yelled at him, are you okay? And he looked up and he saw me there and he smiled and he flipped his head over and then all this blood came spurting out of his ear. Oh, man. And they could hear me a couple blocks down the street. How old were you at that time? I was 17 on April the 11th and I would have turned 18 on April 22nd on Earth Day. Wow. And it really helped me form my ideas about uh, the concept of the hereafter and all that kind of jazz. And Dexter had a a three-year-old son that his wife had uh, left him with. And uh, I remember the little boy. He used to like me. He used to like to brush my hair, you know. And he'd say, Margo, where's Daddy? Is he sleeping with you? Oh, my God. And I told him, no, he's just sleeping outside, and he was keeping an eye on both of us. What the hell do you tell the kid, you know? So Sorry for my uh, quick absence there. Don't use the red waste basket in the main house bathroom. <laughs> Don't. I just did a Nico. <laughs> oh, are you? Serious? Why didn't you use it? To- Why didn't you use the toilet? The other end was on the toilet. <laughs> 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 I guess I didn't have to tell you that, but <laughs> yeah, I'm having a white porcelain god. Ah, oh, oh, yeah. I'm not a puker, but this is, this weekend <laughs> evidently mounted up on me. On us both. I think oh. the weekend mounted you. Oh. <laughs> oh, I just remembered we're not supposed to use that toilet. It's still leaking. You did a push me, pull me. Yeah, push me, pull you. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh a, I learned that from Joey Diaz. He's a friend of ours. He's a comedian. When I first met him, he was hosting a show in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, I had the, the push me pull you flu this weekend. You know you know the kind where you don't know which end to aim at the toilet? Oh God. <laughs> That's funny. Oh God. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad you came back just in time because we were just chit chatting. Nothing really heavy, so <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like a good time to come in with a I heavy with a vomit story. Two sentences away from crying. <laughs> I'm crying, but that's <laughs> kind of reflex action. <laughs> Is that staunchy, stinky? Uh, no, I, I hit the mouthwash before I came back. Don't I, worry. Doug, I, I do. I, I have to say thank you, Margo, for hosting. The last time we were at your place, you were hosting the Kentucky, Kentucky Derby, Derby. She does every year, and you put on a great spread. We had a fantastic. We dressed up. We love it. Uh, I I don't think we've ever been there. I've never been there for a party. I know Doug and Bingo probably have. We had a fantastic time, and I, I really appreciate you uh, extending oh, that invitation. Oh, that was to such us. a blast, my yeah. friend Gary Lee Redmond. I call him Mister Glee, and uh, his daddy used to. So, um, those mint julep things, and he would come down with all this great mint julep stuff. Oh my God. And everybody- That was the first time I had a mint julep, yeah. was this year at your party. I'd never had one before. Aren't they fabulous? You know what? This, this year's, uh, Kentucky Derby, speaking of more poop stories, because they <laughs> always fly on the podcast. We all, you know, pick the uh, horses. You pick randomly, like we do squares here. Right, right, right. right. And uh, and Bingo won money, but had left because she had to shit and didn't want to shit in your house. So she walked down oh, that's right. from your house all the way down to Elmo's to shit before the serious? race. But right before yeah, the race. Right before the race. Oh, and yeah. then she won money. Because they, what did they do? They, they, everyone uh, put in money and you got to draw, blind draw from a hat. Right. For right. The, the number of the horse. Yeah. Yeah. And we, Bingo got like the favorite. I think she got the, or the, or the place horse. She, I don't know. She, Whatever it was, she was in the money and then we refused to take the money because he well, must, be must be present to win. Must be present to win. Well, when I, it's a great party. What, you, the first one, when we first moved here, you had your old place and you, oh no, you had a place. That you sold right on the the main drag for the Derby races, but you you sold the house with the uh, to, to Hans Decos and Darkies Hans and Darkies Decos, and they said 
after they bought it, they said, okay, what's, you know. Yeah, the stipulation well, was. Well, okay, what haven't you told us about your place? And I said, well, you got to expect a lot of people up here for the derby races. Fourth of July. Fourth of the July. coaster races. Yep, yep. They used to be fucking crazy, though. Like, oh. I, they're all safe now, but people died in that. Yeah, they did. Spectator. Yeah. <laughs> Spectators. Yeah. Is that, that's on Tombstone, right? Is it Tombstone yeah. Canyon? Yeah, that's yeah, what, that's, I was on so the, it's down from where you live now. Yeah. That was just a great spot. Were, were you around for when they were dangerous? The races? Yeah. Yeah. Because well, it was it was pretty tame by the time we moved here. We've been here for thirteen years, but well, it it was uh, it was just really exciting. They'd come down whipping around that corner there, and <laughs> especially after the deaths. <laughs> then oh, it got God. really exciting. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> Now that I think of it, because well, you, you were talking about, oh, you sold me a house. Because I had never met you. I bought that house, you know, having only looked through the windows, this house, the main house here. And That's I went the way back I to like LA. to sell property. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in this <laughs> Sight unseen. I am the easiest sale ever. I, I don't test drive cars because it's a fucking new car. It's going to drive great. You know, f- four years from now. When I realize it's a piece of shit, it's too late. Yeah, that's what I like about selling real estate. Uh, really but I later. came up to you uh, because, again, I knew the voice, and you were, uh, I don't know if it's the Copper Queen, or you were in some place where I heard your voice, and, knew, and I went out, and I bought a bottle of champagne, and I brought it to you and said, thanks for, you sold me this house, and you had no fucking idea. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet. Was, <laughs> which which property was it? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. you know, it was really funny. Now I I call my front porch the truth serum porch in a sense because as a realtor, I didn't want to hear everybody's personal story because I was just look, cruising for a bruising and looking to get sued. I mean, everybody wants to sue a realtor or sue at somebody. Yeah. And so I just never asked any questions. But now that I'm no longer a realtor, I can sit and ask people personal questions that I didn't ask them before. So that's why I call it the truth serum porch. <laughs> and people will just tell me wonderful things that I am okay with now but it's it's almost without like, a name give us a good one uh well, without a name give you a good one on that's not going to come back to haunt you <laughs> oh well uh, then i can't tell you anybody's <laughs> name <laughs> i believe in being haunted now it's just uh it's really interesting learning about people that I was quite curious about. And they could sit and tell me these things, and it's okay. Yeah, you know? Yeah, we kind of have that here. Where everybody here has got some fucked up story. That usually happens after 10 p.m., <laughs> especially after a football well, game. And the good thing is is that everybody here is so drunk they forget what you said the night before. So, <laughs> so. Well, here, here. Here's the booze. <laughs> yes, it's a. Boozing it's, and cruising, it, baby. It's a confessional. Yeah. What are you, you, you going to have done with you when you're croaked? When I croak? Yeah. Well, I'd kind of like to have myself. <laughs> Jimmy Carver one, one so. I don't know, you didn't probably know Jimmy Carpenter, but he was quite a character. Oh, uh, Carver, not not Carter. Carpenter. Oh, Jimmy Carpenter. Carpenter. No. He says, Jewish I'm gonna- Carpenter? Hey. I was just, I'm, we're doing, I'm doing an old person podcast now. <laughs> what Jewish Carpenter? <laughs> well, that guy. 
He, Jimmy Carpenter said, I like the front line goddamn body in the middle of the gymnasium and blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> My brother and I always said we wanted to get each other stuffed. Whoever died first gets the other guy <laughs> stuffed and uses him as a coat rack. When you come into the house, you hang your coat up on the outstretched hands. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's not legal, but a lot of things aren't. There are some things that aren't illegal. I'm saying a lot of good ideas aren't legal. You just have to you have to have a buddy that you know. There's a lot of handy men in town. They're not licensed taxidermists, but they're handy. <laughs> You're not going to look that good no matter how much experience they have. So. Yeah. <laughs> God, that fuck. Do you know that weird tow truck driver? Uh, the tow yard down there on uh, by the veterinarian over in San Jose. He's got a tow yard. Bingo got a car towed, and we went to pick it up once years ago, and he goes, oh, did you want to come inside? He's got, like, a full, like, museum of taxidermied zebras and fucking ostrich. ostrich. He's a fucking ostrich? Bears and fucking everything. I, I, did he have a giraffe? Okay. Wait, did he do it? Or did Just he... leave that open. I forget Kill Monday Night Football. Man. Oh, yeah. Did he like, did he do the taxidermy? So that cross-eyed hyena? I, I don't know, but Bingo. He shot the animals. He, okay. he, killed, he killed the animals. Done. Oh, he had them done. Because you went back there with your family to show them, didn't you? Yeah, and then I took Alex and Steve. All right. Yeah, he loves showing them off. And it's one of those things where you go, I'm so against what you're doing, but it's I still I'm still gonna look. Like you have to go to fucking Nairobi and fucking kill a beautiful animal and just keep it out in San Jose in some fucking living room no one ever sees. He's just desperate. Like, first of all, I just had to give you like $180 to get my fucking car out of here and now you're going to give me a, a tour. I guess it is a... I can save him money. Park. I can get you up to Rooster Cogburns and get an ostrich just right off the tent. <laughs> There's another large person. That's arriving. Neighbor Dave. Neighbor Dave is here. We, I forget it's Monday Night Football, so that'll that'll go on soon, Neighbor Dave. But make yourself at home. Well, button it up. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> button it up, he says. I'll drink to that. Cheers to you. Salud, uh, yeah. mi compañero. Salud. I'm just going to take a small sip as I have Salud. a little squirrely belly. Dinero y amor y tiempo para gustarlos. Oh, you're stealing Chad's job. <laughs> <laughs> if, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. I love that. I know. I, I, we learned it from you. <laughs> Say it all the time. I think you said that on the first podcast you were on, back when you you got here and you had your, your dressed up and your lipstick on, and you go, do I get in an actual pod? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just a dumb broad, you know. Well, uh, That's when she twirls the back of her hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, there is such an advantage to people thinking I'm a dumb broad. <laughs> It oh, gives always me, play dumb. gives me the big edge, man. <laughs> Perfect. Be, I, here's to being a dumb. I don't broad. think anyone has to. Uh, yeah, I don't think you have to play your, with that anymore around here. You're a, you're a fucking god in this town. <laughs> a god death. <laughs> <laughs> That's feminine. In case you didn't notice, you're very feminine, my love. Thank you. I'm glad you came out. It's As been a, a while. <laughs> no, I mean, came to the fun house. I'm glad you're here. Oh. It's been too long. <laughs> it's been almost five years since you've been on the podcast. I didn't know we were doing it that long. I told someone yesterday that I think we've been doing this three years. And yeah, you were. You I think were he's still wrong. He's I'm still sure. wrong. It's, yeah, it's 2013 we started. I mean. No one's been saying it's though. her. It's almost oh, yeah. five. And yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. What? Is she trying to get you to be her backdoor man? No, she was hit, tapping me on the back because I'm coughing, and I pointed at the weed pipe for her. She said, no, no. <laughs> There's edibles, too. No, 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 no. She can't. Okay. She told us it's, the medication it oh, doesn't, it right. doesn't work good. Well, it's a, it'd be a fun way to close out the podcast it would, it is would to be, have her yeah. slouch over the bar <laughs> again. 
<laughs> oh, thanks a lot, my little pal. <laughs> Jeez. You know I worship you. Yeah, well, get down on your knees and show me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Love save you, it for baby. Safeway. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, big fella. I think. Uh, do we need to do another break? Or we ra- are we? Whatever well, you want. No, no, no. Let's do a police beat. You want to do a police beat, Chad? Always. All right. <laughs> There's a few marked off on here. Can, can I do a police beat? You can absolutely. You'll do dueling police beats. Let me find one that's marked. A Uh-oh. new cub reporter in the street. set up. Do you want to just uh, hand this you know one? You know what I mean? Uh, Doug? Uh, give, give her the... Yeah, why don't we just up. go back and forth? You yeah. cross out the one you do. No, Doug, uh, uh, Chad, oh, you start. Okay. Okay. And then cross out the one you do so she doesn't have to... You know. okay. ooh, ooh. Oh, shit. Here, do you need my readers to well, figure out your readers? figure out how to tag them, motherfuckers. Yeah, okay. Okay, now I need... Uh, he's, me. He's, hey. uh, you're going to share that one because I highlighted you, the good one. Right. I'll, I'll go first and then I'll uh, throw it to you. Oh, he's going to toss it to yep. me. Toss it to me. Okay, we, we have. Now we have uh, Chad Shank, our, uh, our, our, our uh, on the spot uh, crime reporter <laughs> in the fields out on the mean streets of Bisbee. What's going on in the Bisbee police beat this week, Chad? Doug, a caller said his neighbor, who appeared intoxicated, had come to his house and accused him of being a peeping Tom. Tough times. <laughs> Slippery slope. Main streets. I mean... And, our, and, and your new protege, <laughs> Margo Wallenberg. What, what's going on on your side of Bisbee? A caller said a Havelina family with two adults and two babies had been frequenting the lot next to the old Moore's grocery between midnight and three A.M. Midnight and three. Noted. Hey, if you're out between midnight and three, be very, very careful of the javelina and its babies. Chad, what do you got? A woman (laughs) said a person she knows had headbutted another one of her acquaintances. (laughs) You know what? Uh, When heads are outlaws, only outlaws will have heads. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All women are outheads or outlaws or <laughs> outhouses. You're drunk, Margo. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I would be too if I hadn't thrown up three whiskey cokes. <laughs> hmm. Okay, we're we're gonna go to uh, Margo right now in the field. An elderly woman who was very upset called to say her caretaker. Hadn't arrived. <laughs> oh, Chad, if you could just put a sultry spin like that on your reads. <laughs> Give it a oh, shot, man. Chad. What do you got? That's a fucking tall order. <laughs> and you are a tall order, baby. <laughs> I, feel, I feel a bit more sexy now. Now it's going to be a not so hard. A caller reported that a man was flashing his strobe light from inside his house toward the psychic across the highway. A psychic across the highway? Or there's sidekick? A, a, <laughs> or a sidekick. sidekick? No, psychic. Side piece? What are they talking about? So Tonto is really pissed off that someone's shining a light in his house? You know that psychic that's over by his, on the way to Safeway? And no, there's a sign that's been out there for a million years and... You never see a, a car out there. There's no customers. Well, would you park in front? I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> I'd park in back. I wouldn't want anyone to know I went to a psychic. They're scaring away the epileptics with that strobe light. <laughs> I see a seizure in your future. <laughs> what do you got for us, Margo? Well, it's kind of... Kind of... Um, okay. A caller reported that a deer was lying in the middle of the road and appeared to have been hit. But the responding officer said it got up and ran away. If only Bambi could have ended like that. (laughs) (laughs) Chad, what do you got? She's 
Margo is reading, <laughs> is reading each one of them. She's not looking at the ones that we Oh, selected. the highlighted ones. Are the, uh, all right. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know I was <laughs> supposed to do that. That's all right. Nobody fucking told I think me. It's, I think it's very uh, impressive. I can play back the tape. Just <laughs> perusing it. <laughs> Go ahead, Chad. <laughs> a woman complained... <laughs> A woman complained that workers with OB construction keep urinating at a work site near her house. <laughs> she said this was the fifth time she had called. <laughs> Wait till Maybe after lunch. she was drinking a fifth. <laughs> or taking a fifth. <laughs> That's not who's working on your house, is it, <laughs> No, our, we, our urinal is on the fence, and it go, just goes yeah. into the other yard. So, yeah, we pee in our... Everyone pees. <laughs> well, the construction workers aren't going to pee in your urinal. That's just rude. I I would assume... I don't want them going in the house. No, Jesus. They would just pee in the neighbor's yard. Yeah. Hence the call. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a few in there that might be us. Let's see if she finds one. Go ahead, Margo. <laughs> well, I'm kind of confused here, but what's new? The um, blue ones. The blue ones? Any blue ones. Oh, okay. A man reported that his wife had received three calls from a clan. A clan. Oh, oops, man. <laughs> from a man claiming to be with Publishing's Clearinghouse. He told her that if she sent $153.83 through Western Union, he would send her a big check. Quote, unquote, the big check. Big check. <laughs> Which I thought, oh, maybe Tom Kanopka is back to his old work. <laughs> I love that guy. Tom's great. He's a sweetie. Yeah, he doesn't come around much anymore. I, I, I've been meaning to call him. Yeah, yeah, he'll he'll be here this week. Him. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Let's give him a collect obscene phone call right now. <laughs> collect obscene phone yes, call. Yes. Can he even call Do collect you have his phone anymore? Number? Yeah, I get his number. Oh, good. Let's give All him right. a call. All I'm right. serious. I'm what serious. Margo wants, Hold Margo on, Doug. This, we can wrap this it up. This will be good. Uh, okay, uh, go, Chad. I'll, I'll, I'll get the phone ready. Yeah, wrap, wrap it up with a, a, the last few. <laughs> and finally... A caller said she witnessed a man kissing a boy about 12 years old and not in a fatherly way. <laughs> I guess that depends on who your father was. Like open mouth? Is that, Any is that code? Every <laughs> Catholic. <laughs> P. A Catholic way or a fatherly way? Oh, father, I get it. Oh, it's a Catholic way. That's <laughs> a given. Um, uh, that was the police beat. Thank you, our our, our new cub reporter, Margo Wallenberg, and of course, Chad Shank with the police beat. There were a couple others. There was one about uh, fireworks being ignited, and I go, oh, that could have been us. Uh, no one knows that, Doug. We're, we can save that for another one. No, but because I already said that there's a few that might be us, but one was fireworks because I remember someone I threw a full you bag threw of, a fireworks bunch of fireworks yeah. in the fire pit, <laughs> and then there was another one about shooting someone shooting at the old Bisbee firing range again. Uh, that was remember when Joby was out there yeah. blowing up explosives, and Kenny said he could hear hear it from the golf course. Yeah. <laughs> you mean Castle Rock, Kenny, or yeah. There yep. is no uh, other. Castle Rock Kenny, a.k.a. Cold Cut Kenny, a.k.a. <laughs> Cur Curbstone Kenny. We, we were getting... A whole, <laughs> like he has a history of Curbstone nicknames. Curbstone Kenny. Cornhole Kenny was what I had him in my phone. Oh, that's, 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 not, that's not nice. Well, no, that's it's a game. <laughs> It's a game. You throw the bean. No, our relationship. Wow, you you don't see where backdoor man might have a double entendre with anal, but okay. cornhole all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, what about a homeless man was sleeping in the rose garden next to the church? Uh, hang on, Tom. Are you there? I can't hear you, sir. Tom, you're on speakerphone. You're on the podcast with Margot Wallenberg. She demanded to drunk dial you. This is a select of seeing phone again. call, honey. <laughs> he's he's talking to you, Margo. I want to hear it. I just want to smoke another cigarette. <laughs> he's, do, he's doing impressions of you. He, he, she, she can't really hear yeah, you, Tom. When, Mar Margo, when Margo comes into Roca, she stands up and she starts to walk outside. She says, 
don't tell anybody I'm going to go outside and get some smoking up. It stunts your growth. <laughs> I love you, Margo. We're going to go back to Vegas and hit the poker tables. She's a counter and I'm a mechanic. You can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Tom. We were just talking about your other podcast that we miss you. So, uh, But I'll see you this week. Who loves you, baby? I love you, Margo. Peace to all the killer termites. <laughs> all right, we'll Peace see. out. We'll love see you Tom. soon. <laughs> he said that every time you come into Roca, you'll sneak out and go, I need to go get some smoking in me. It stunts your growth. He's just <laughs> telling the story that you were telling about smoking uh, stunting your growth. See, I I don't I don't lie. You don't <laughs> often. Real news. <laughs> you just don't remember the truth. The truth is so easy because you don't have to remember it. If you tell the truth, you don't have to fucking sweat anything. And if you don't remember anything, you don't have to give a shit about the truth. Nope. Well, I'm going to have to take your word on it. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Cheers, Margo. We love you. That's the uh, podcast. This should be a Christmas as far as anyone's concerned. Merry Christmas to all of you out there who give a fuck. Uh, we don't, but uh, we'll be drinking with you. Thank you, Chad Shake, Chaley, Margo, and our cast da, 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 of characters da, 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 in the background. Da, 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 I'm going to go clean a wastebasket. Oh, God bless not. us, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a fun one. <laughs> that was very dangerous. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm I'm officially on the. You got to put a quarter in it before you can see through. Oh, the podcast that did that right there. I have to switch teams. Really. Yeah, we should have had a camera. Uh, I love you, baby. Ah, you know, you're wonderful. I do. Close photos on. <laughs> Thank you.